So I know what you might be thinking. Is this a movie about the ride that we take on the way to the grocery store when you have kids? No, actually this is a request from one of my top tier patrons, Dragon Khan. That's right, our good friend of the channel, Khan, has started to request movies as is his right to his tier. And this month, this is his request. So let's jump on this wild hog and see what it's all about. <laughs> Hellride is brought to us by director Larry Bishop and stars Larry Bishop, Michael Madsen, Eric Bolfer, and a whole bunch more mofo. Two rival biker gangs, the Victors and the 666ers, refuel their decades old rivalry. So 2008's Hellride is a movie that honestly I'd never heard of. And about five or ten minutes into it, I started thinking this really reminds me of a Quentin Tarantino movie. This was right around the time that the title screen pops up and guess what it says? Presented by Quentin Tarantino. So that makes sense. And even though this is presented by Quentin Tarantino, and I'm sure he had some insight on the project, this is very much a Larry Bishop joint. Bishop was the writer, director, producer, and star of the film. And I'm not 100% sure if Bishop took inspiration from Tarantino, or if he just took inspiration from the same places that Tarantino himself takes inspiration from. Most notably, 1970s Grindhouse film. Now this movie does have a story, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's not the highlight of this experience. It's fine, I mean it gets us from point A to point B, like it's supposed to. Much like the synopsis said, it's about these two rival biker gangs that had this long time feud and it's starting to flare up again. We've also got some other characters that have ulterior motives because of things that happened to them years and years ago. And all of it ties together with these two biker gangs. We've got lots of deception and double crosses and a whole bunch of bad motherfuckers looking like motherfucking badasses. And that is what the core of this movie is. A whole bunch of badasses doing badass shit. This movie is style over substance at its core. Now that's not to say that there's not some substance here and that this movie isn't entertaining, but it is clear from the get-go that this movie's main goal is to be super fucking cool. And to be honest, they achieved that goal in spades. Not only are the characters in this movie just like really fucking cool and just a hell of a time to watch, but the movie itself just oozes that super cool 1970s grindhouse awesomeness. This is about as close to a Quentin Tarantino movie you can get without Quentin Tarantino actually coming in and making the damn thing. It's hyper-violent, over-sexualized, kinetic as hell, and just overall a really cool fucking movie. Now when it comes to really stylistic movies like this that are very much more stylish and substance, you run the risk of just kind of being boring. All that style coming off as empty because there's nothing to hold it all together. And that's where that story I was talking about in this movie comes into play. No, it is not the greatest story ever, but it is an entertaining enough story that moves things along. It gets us to the places we need to be so our super cool characters can do super cool shit. I wouldn't say that the story's like totally throwaway. I mean, there is something here. There's some intrigue, there's some mysteries and things of that nature. It's just not the deepest story ever, but that's okay because it works for this movie. There's enough mystery, there's enough intrigue, there's enough story here to get us by. This movie is more about the scenes and the kind of vignettes that our characters get into. There's some really neat fun scenes in this movie and they're able to weave the story in to give us a reason to be in these places. It almost seems like Larry Bishop had all these like different ideas of specific scenes that would be really cool and he just needed to make a story to kind of tie them all together and admittedly he was successful in that. Now the movie's not perfect. Given all that, obviously, yes, it's a bit shallow. But a movie can be shallow and still be fun. The movie is entertaining and that's its number one job. But don't go into this expecting any type of like introspective deep thought on anything because you're not getting any of that. This is all about just being super fucking cool. It also starts to drag just a bit closer to the end before things ramp back up. It's kind of like it went on just a bit too long. I was cool with the whole super cool thing sustaining it for all that time, but then that starts to wear a bit thin and the story's not really there to support Support it and for about five or so minutes things get a bit slow but they do quickly pick back up with some really fucking cool scenes in the end. Overall I enjoyed the 
narrative, if that's what we want to call it, of this movie, but that's not what it's really about. It's about being really fucking cool in really 1970s grindhouse, and they pulled that shit off in spades. Our performances, much like the rest of the movie, are very 1970s grindhouse as well, and they fit into that mold. These performances are very over the top and grando. These are all very heightened, over the top characters. But everybody in the movie did a great job with that. Everybody knew the movie that they were in, and they played to that fantastically. Also, let's talk about this cast. Holy shit, there's a whole lot of people in this movie. On top of everybody I've already talked about, you've also got Dennis Hopper, Vinnie Jones, Michael Beach, David Carradine, Julie Jones, just a whole bunch of mofos in this movie that you've seen before. This is a stacked cast, and it seems like everybody in this cast, no matter how big their role, was just having a great time in this over-the-top, ridiculous, super fucking cool movie. And when your cast is clearly having this much fun making the film, it's kind of hard for some of that not to bleed through to us, the audience. Guys, Hell Ride was an over-the-top, ultra-violent, ultra-sexy, super fucking cool ode to 1970s grindhouse flicks. While the focus isn't on story and more on style, and things do drag for just a few minutes closer to the end, overall, this movie was just so fucking cool from beginning to end, you can't help but have a good time with it. Add to that some wonderfully fun performances from a cavalcade of well-known actors, and you've got a movie that just oozes style and is entertaining as hell. And that is this movie's job at the end of the day, to be entertaining, and it absolutely is. And what else it is, is absolutely worth a rent. All he wanted was, hey, this. I have to return some videotape. This is one of the coolest movies I've ever seen. If you just want to see some people acting cool for an hour and a half and being successful at it, then check this movie out one night and I think you're going to have a pretty good time with it. So there it is, guys, my review of Hell Ride. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit the subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jar and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with it like these guys and possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg C and Dragon Khan. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Phoenix. I actually felt that one. So apparently this was Dennis Hopper's final role before passing away. And if nothing else, that is enough reason alone to check this movie out, to see this iconic actor take one last ride. So what's your favorite Dennis Hopper performance from over the years? Now while there are many great ones for me, myself personally, there is one that stands out above the rest. Mommy, mommy, baby wants to fuck, baby wants to fuck. <laughs> Man, I'm not the biggest David Lynch fan or anything, but goddamn, that shit's fucking amazing!